back to his beer. It's been a couple of weeks, as you know. And the reason being, Bert had a couple of weeks off. And so on my days off, instead of being able to do this, or things like this, she wanted to go out and do the cuffly thing. Mm. They seem to like that, women, so whatever, I, I gave in and I did it. But <coughs> it's um, been a couple of weeks of just, I've been working, she's been off. And I did last week, I did nights. I hate nights. Oh, I detest driving nights. Oh, but it's so empty and it's so clear. Is it? Is it really? I didn't bloody notice. Because every road was shut, shutting or down to one lane. Bloody ate it. And then I got London as well. So that was... But anyway, whatever. Doesn't really matter. Now, I'm sure I was supposed to have done this shout out a little while ago. And I can't remember whether I did, so I'm going to do it again. If I did it already. If I didn't, then this is the first time you're hearing it, so ignore everything. <laughs> but, Obi Noob, I warned you I was going to go Star Wars on you. Um, he wants, he's doing his HGVs and stuff, but he has certain medical issues, which means he's had to do a ECG and a stress test. Now, obviously, I know sod all about that. So, what he said under one of my uploads, and I'm sure he will mention himself under this one as well, is that if anybody's facing having to do an ECG and a stress test and all that kind of stuff to get their license or to renew their license or something like that, and you're curious about it, chat to him down below. So hopefully Obi Noob will leave a comment down below and people can talk to you if they've got any questions about it because obviously you've done it quite recently. Now I did say I was going to mention that and I've had a couple of weeks off. I've been here, there and everywhere working, doing stuff with Bert. And it's just, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. I don't know. I just, I give up. I do, I give up. <laughs> but, wow. Well, it's been fun. It's, it, it's been a lot of fun. And I'm sure there was somebody else I was supposed to make a, a mention of. And I can't remember, and I'm so sorry. If I've promised you a mention or responding to you, I've completely forgotten. It's unlike me, but I've totally forgotten. And I'd be here a month of Sundays going through every single video trying to figure out, have I, you know, who's left a comment? Did I respond to him in the next one? So I've got to watch the next video. I'd be here for years. <laughs> so if I haven't mentioned you or responded to you, I should say, then please, under this one, leave a comment. And the next upload I do will be responses to everybody I have failed to respond to. Because I have been... Because I'm not doing this daily. It's a case of I see your comment, I respond to you usually in the comment section. And then a few days later, a week later, whatever, I sit down to do something and meow, it's gone. So many apologies. Uh, but like I said, if I have ignored you, I'm not deliberately ignoring you. I'm a man. I forget things. Deal with it. So leave a comment down below. Everyone's a winner. Now, in regards of the vice that I am currently doing up, I've done pretty much everything I need to do. Done the woodwork now, cleaned all the gubbins up, and I've been looking at it. And I don't mind a bit of patina, so I'm not going to send stuff off to get it re -chromed. I really don't mind that. It's a vice. It's a working vice. It's an old vice. Therefore, it's going to have certain bits and bobs. But the handle at the end, the, the winder at the end, that's really rusted. I mean, that's proper just eaten into it. And I've been looking at it, I've been thinking, well, the rust remover stuff that works on the chrome and just flats it back and all that kind of stuff, that's fine. But it's not really going to do much on this handle. Because it's, you know, it's, it's got to that stage where it's pitted the metal now and all that. Um, 
Ouch, no, sorry about that. Um, so I've been having a chat with Bert, obviously she's had the last couple of weeks off, and there is a reason I am with this woman. Okay, as you know, the, mu uh, the Mustang. <laughs> I'm not giving anything away, I don't own a Mustang, so the Mondeo. I hate folds all round, so whatever. I I view the Mustang as like the 60s version of the Mondeo. Just mass produced and everywhere. Everybody had one. And it's an ongoing joke between myself and Bert, so sorry about that. But as you know, the Mondeo is knackered. Now, last week obviously I was working nights and I have a friend who's out uh, Molden Way. And he uh, does up engines and things like that. Now I've asked him, I have repeatedly asked him to appear on my YouTube channel. To make some content for YouTube. And he refuses. He's 50... He's in his mid-50s now. But he just, he's not into... I mean, I'm technologically as advanced as a loaf of bread. But he's technologically advanced, as advanced as a pyramid. You know, he, is, he he doesn't do any social media or anything like that. And I've asked him, I begged him, because he's an engine guy. He, he rebuilds engines, he does them up and all this kind of stuff. It would be cool. But he, he just doesn't want to know. And it's king irritating. It's king great irritating, I'll tell you that. Um, but I shoved him in one day, I was saying, if he needed any parts or stuff like this. And I explained the situation. Now, Phil... I remember you commented and you said chances are it's not actually fractured because you need to get black light and all that kind of stuff on it. Which is fair enough. I'm only going by what I had been told, so don't shoot the messenger here, okay? And I, I left it with him um, just before I went and did my week and nights, and I've got it back now. It's chucked on the driveway. The crank is actually damaged in three locations. Uh... He doesn't think, obviously, it's probably not fractured, it, it, it's probably not even cracked, but it is damaged in three locations. He doesn't know why, it could, it could be a whole bad service in it, could have been timing went out on it at some point, God knows. Um, but he couldn't really do anything with it, he didn't want any parts off of it, so I'm, I'm just going to phone up a scrapyard and get them to come and get it. But it isn't uh, fractured as far as he's aware, it... it, it it's damaged in three places, but obviously the powers that be at the garage I took it to didn't want to work on it, didn't want anything to do with it, and just said, oh, well, it, it's fractured. Maybe they wanted to work on it and do a whole engine rebuild and cost me God knows how much. Uh, but anyway, whatever, I don't really care. But I have, there is a reason I am with Bud. See, because obviously the Monday is going, the cheap heap is buggering off. Well, I'm allowed to replace it. At a later stage, obviously, I've got to save some money here. And there's two rules I have to meet to replace it. It has to be a V. Now, this is, this is coming from Burr, okay, so I'll explain. It's got to be either a V6, V8, V10, or V12. There is a reason I'm with her, okay. Um, and I've been having a look at 760 V12s. <laughs> Why not? I'm going to spend money. Uh, but then, of course, she's a big fan of Jaguar. I don't mind Jags as well, so I could have a little V8 for one of those. Um, I have tried to entice her into going straight 6. But if I get a straight 6 XJ, fine, whatever. But I used to have an X-Type. And that was a 2.5 V6. And she loved it. She loved it. Everywhere she went in that, it was a good speed limit. All right, I'll tell you that now. It was a good speed limit. And she, I don't know, she just fell in love with it. It's the one I gave to a friend of mine called Shane, who I used to drive with out of the wholesalers. And he's Alfa Romeo, because before I started doing YouTube, myself and a friend, we used to run a garage on the side. Unfortunately... My friend, ex-friend, started doing up his own personal cars on the garage's books. And when I cottoned on to what was going on, I resigned. I walked away because it was a limited company. 
and I still ended up getting a debt collector's letter for £8,000 dropped on my door to be paid within 14 days or action would be taken. And that was, if you remember I've mentioned about the Santander business account, they wouldn't let me, yeah, that, that was part of it. They, they wouldn't let me close it down. That was obviously the remaining part of that venture. I'm sure I've mentioned it before. But Shane gave us the alpha to do some work on because it needed some patchwork underneath and yeah, it needed more than that. Put it this way, this Alfa Romeo was so rotten, it was so rotten, that even the glass was turning white. It was, even the glass was separating and turning white. It was essentially rotting. Okay, the, the thing was knackered. You could poke your finger through the floor and not cut yourself, not hurt yourself at all. Just go, as my uh, friend at the time, my ex-business partner, said you could finger the damn thing, quite literally. And anyway, it was coming up to the MIT, it was never gonna pass, never in a million years was this thing gonna pass, and so I just gave him the J. I'd done some work on it, it needed a little bit more work doing to it. I told him it needed seals, but the, the floors themselves were fine. Um, I'd done one bank, but the other bank needed doing. Um, and he was like, yeah, no, that's fine. I mean, that's far better condition than the piece of crap I've got. So I, I just gave him the car. But yeah, Bert loved the damn thing. She loved it. And so chances are, the next vehicle I get is going to be a Jag. As I said about the vice, I've gone on a tangent and I've come straight back to the vice. Straight back to it. I was, I was thinking about, you know, doing some proper elbow grease, getting the paint off and obviously, the, like I said, the rust. And I was having a conversation, getting back on point. There's a plot here, there's a plot, there's a plot. And I'm trying to, but of course she's doing her arts and crafts and she's really starting to get into that now. She does painting. Obviously, well, you can't see it, but I've shown you it before, the camera's up there. Candles, she's doing lip balms, body lotions, rain chains. God knows what they are. Um, they're just, as far as I can see, just colourful bits of plastic on a piece of copper with bits of metal fake leaves in it. I don't know. Um, she's just got... It's insane. It is quite literally insane. She's going to hate me for this. But just for you guys at home, keep it under your wrap, won't you? I'll be back in a second. Well, I'm back. Now, keep this under your hat, son. Right. That's something she's currently working on. Obviously, it's, it's, it's a work in progress. But this, now this, I actually personally like. Don't know about you guys. Look at that. That's, now that's good. To me, that's good. I mean, I'm as artistic as a brick wall. But to me, that is actually really good. I'm really liking that. Ooh, don't want to drop it. <laughs> oh, I dropped this, I'm for the eye jump. Well, actually, I'm for the Argentines, I don't know about you. But that's, I actually really, really like that. That's, I, I didn't know she'd done that because I'm looking at a different one that she's done and it's just kind of an explosion of colour. Um, you kind of, obviously, it's, it's, it's the head ray. It's, uh, flower beds and she's kind of done it an explosion of colour and I moved it because I was going to bring that to show you and then I saw this I was like damn that really is good so this is the kind of stuff she's working on um, and I'm going to see if I can start taking her live with an online shop and stuff like that so she can start selling stuff um, but she wants to we've got a, an etching machine just a little thing you know to do coasters and stuff like that nothing major and she wants to start learning that and doing some bits and bobs like that so she can mass produce like coasters and just studs and sods, little bits on wood because it'll etch bleeding anything. Um, but we're going to see if we can go live on that. And we were discussing all of this and I said about the vice and the rust. And basically the long and the short of it is I am allowed, if I wish, to get a sandblaster. 
I am al I am allowed to get air compressors, pipes, and a sand blaster, a media blaster. Basically, it doesn't have to be sand. A media blaster, and I've seen a couple of smallish ones. I'm not talking industrial scale, obviously, but cut hundred quid. And I've been reading the reviews, and you need to kind of seal them up because if you just bolt them, it, it doesn't seal properly. And I'm thinking, well, a bit of gasket sealant, that'll do, won't it? You know, squish it round the edge and squish it together and done. And, yeah, I'm allowed to do that. Now, it's going to be a few hundred notes. You know, a couple of hundred pieces of paper with a Queen's face on. But, I'm thinking, if I'm going to strip the paint down on this vice and I'm going to get rid of that rust, Let's wait until I've got sandblaster <laughs> and bung it in there and, go <laughs> and get it proper job. Because I can probably put a camera in the in the, in the casing somewhere and show you inside as it's going around. And I might even expand into sandblasting everything. Everything. Because I've been getting into the hydraulic press channel and beyond the press channel. And I believe they're from Finland. And they're funny as hell. If you haven't heard of them, please check these people out. They are funny as hell. It's a couple. It's a man and a woman. And I just, I, I love it. They just, I, they put anything in a hydraulic press and just squash it. <laughs> it's funny as hell. I don't know why it's funny. It just is. It, I think it's because of their... English, their level of English, the way they say things. But please go and check them out if you haven't heard of them. Please, you will not regret it. Some of them are a bit boring, but a lot of them are fun. They even, uh, beyond the press channel, they had this Fiesta, uh, Mark III, I think, and they emptied out all the oil and filled it with Coca-Cola and, and saw how far it would run. <laughs> well done! Only in Finland. Well done! Um, they also uh, drove the car. They, they, they put the car up before, obviously, they, they seized the engine, obviously. And they put it flat out and put the brake on to see how long it took for the brake disc to explode and they've got these high speed slow-mo cameras it is a really good channel so please go and check those out um, but yeah I was thinking if I get this sandblaster I'm just going to sandblast anything hmm. just how long does a can of Cobra full, full last against a sandblaster hmm. it's, it's a question Everybody has asked that question at least once. How long does a can of Raid last before it blows up? Although I might use that near the end once I've actually used it because it'll probably blow the crap out of the machine. <laughs> you don't know? Hmm? So I'm probably going to go and be slightly silly. But she's allowed me to buy a sandblaster. There is a reason I'm with this woman. The next car to replace the cheap heap has got to be a V. V6, V8, V10, V12. I did say W16, but we don't have the money for a Bugatti Veyron, so... Uh. Um. And I'm allowed a sandblaster. Well done, Bert. And also, because my birthday was quite recently, I am now 33. Yes. I am the Irish for Dirty Tree. She got me that. Yes, she got me that. It is obviously, I'm in the UK. It is obviously a replica. It's not actually a real one. Before people go, nye, 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 nye. It's not actually a real one. I'm in the UK. But as she said to me before, if we lived in a country that wasn't scared to, of its own kin shadow, she'd actually buy me a real one. But we don't yet. But yeah, it's um, 
It's been an interesting couple of weeks, like I said, with her painting and her arts and crafts expanding and... Oh, hold on a minute. Hold on, bruv. Hold on. She's doing weird things with wine glasses. So, hmm. She's making... Now, I don't know how well this is going to pick it up. It might not, but she's actually... Oh, yeah, it has. I'm, I'm looking at the screen, sorry. But she's etched around there. Now, that's by hand, obviously. She's just buggering about with etching. And there's a candle in there, as you can tell by the wick. And, yeah. So she's doing stuff like that. And this is, this is a work in progress. This was just something that the candle making kit she had came with some moulds and she wanted to see, she looked at it and thought it's a bit wide to burn correctly. Um, but yeah, that's just something that she was buggering about with when she started a little candle thing. But that's a mould that comes with the kit, so. But yeah. Um, I did have a thought just then, but don't worry, it, it, was, it was something stupid because he's not here. It's her parents. But yeah, she's also started working with clay. Well, she's doing ev absolutely everything. Anything. She wants to get into woodwork as well. And because of everything she wants to do, I'm now allowed to get certain things, like I said, with the sandblaster, because she can't stop me. Because she she wants to do everything. And it's it's interesting seeing what she comes up with. But yeah, she'll um be doing her bits and bobs of painting and she'll be doing canvas work and candles, wine glasses, etchings, whatever. The list goes on and on and on and on and on. And hopefully I can get her going and we can start selling things. Well, that is that is the drive at the moment. Um, things with vehicles, at this precise point in time, Simon is exceptionally busy with his hedge fund because he's creating a hedge fund and running a hedge fund basically uh, currency trading and oh he did tell me oh, I don't know. something else you've got Stuart now he's swapped out suspension on that Porsche he's changed vacuum line he's done some other things he swears blind it's a lot quicker now but his days off don't match up with my days off. Dan, um, he continually, his days match up with mine and I'm getting tough with him. I'll tell you that I'm getting bro pissed off with him because he's continually working on cars, engine swapping and stuff like that with his missus car and his dad's car and various other bits and bobs like that. And his days match mine, days off I mean. And he goes out, he does them, and then the next time I see him down the garage, because he, he, he rotates, so every so often his days match mine, I should say, sorry. But every time I see him down the garage, he's like, oh yeah, I, I just did another engine, so oh yeah, I, I, I worked on, why aren't you telling me? We can record this, we can, you know, do stuff with it, and that's. But, so he's just, yeah, impossible to work with at the moment. And of course, Carl is still going through the issue with his ex and children, his kids, uh, the cults and various things like that. I'm not going to go into too much detail because it's a private matter. So that's all gone up the tit. So because of everything that's been going wrong with the stuff I want to get do, I want to get done, we're now focusing on Bert's Arts and Crafts. And you can tell, hopefully, she's got a little bit of talent. A little bit of talent. So hopefully I can get that going because I'm going to try and work on a YouTube channel for her to start getting her uh, a bit of a following, you know, just, just getting her out there, you know. Um, so that's a, what we're working on at the moment, basically. Uh, but yeah, I did take my cameras out. I don't like right, this, this, this one. Okay, this one. Which, which card is in this one? And I shall tell you. Come on, get out your little piece of... Uh, yes, it is this one. Right. This one, because I bought five of them not so long ago. Well, a while ago now. This one 
set it all up, put it in my back window because I had a front facing one and a back facing one. This was not last week, the week before. Because myself and Bert, we went out for a bit of a drive, end up in Norfolk. Yeah, a few miles. And I set one in the back and one in the front. And there was a couple of cars that came flying out of nowhere, right up behind me, saw this camera looking at them, you saw their nose drop and they did that. Which was funny in itself. I was followed by one Mondeo about that close for ages. And then over a solid white line he went past me, yeah, on a bend that you couldn't really see round, and he went past me and then got held up by the car that was holding me up, because all he could see was me, not anything in front. And then he went past them, went past them, went past them, and then eventually I went past him because he'd taken a wrong turn and he was in such a rush, he'd take the wrong turn and he pulled over and he was reading the map and I just went past him. But this camera, this camera, the one in the back, didn't work. It worked every so often and then shut itself down after a few minutes. So I don't have a clue what's on them. Because I, I want to edit them, I want to try and do something with those. And if this camera didn't work, it's really, the forward facing is just going to be a car overtaking me. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, the solid white line one might still work, but it was just, if the front, if the back one had been working and the front one had been working, it would have been genius, because you'd have seen them catch me up, slam on, do that, because <laughs> they saw the camera, I don't want to be on YouTube. <laughs> but I'm in the 30, they come screaming round the corner, right up my rear end, you can tell they're speeding. <laughs> It's just, I, I, I nearly, well, when we got to, where did we go? Went to the coast. Um, trying to think where we went now. Yeah. It was a couple of weeks ago. Bear with me and I shall find out for you. Right, found it. Went up round uh, Blakeney, Salt House, Cromer, and around that area. And when I got to a place we stopped in at, I think it was Blackney. I'm sure it was Blackney. I can't remember now. I don't know. It is bugging me. I think it was Blackney. Um, parked up. And the back camera hadn't been recording. I don't know when it had given out, you see. I haven't actually downloaded anything yet. And so that was very annoying very aggravating because what I actually did was I took this camera with me as well because I was gonna do everything together style thing and do some walk around stuff and when I realized this camera had just stopped and I plugged them in because the Hyundai's I don't know what other cars have this I know quite a few cars have this but the Hyundai's we have um, you got power sockets in the boot so I plugged it in as well so it wasn't down to the battery failing or anything like that and these are the 32 gig cards so they'll record it happily um, but yeah it, uh, the front one had carried on the front one had recorded all the way there perfectly fine but the back one had stopped and I was really I was miffed I was angry and I left that camera in the car and never did anything when we were there which is it sucks it's my fault I, I let you guys down sorry on that one but I was just so angry with this and I, I tried to fix it a couple of times but it, it recorded for a while and I think oh it's recorded lovely off we go I've obviously fixed it and then I get to somewhere else fuel station or whatever and it stopped recording again so I don't know how much is on this hopefully there's a couple of things because one of the cars that caught me up and slammed on it was an Audi of course and it was just up the road from here it was down Weathersfield way so hopefully it would have recorded that one um, because that, that was quite funny. And I'll see whether I can do some bits and bobs with that. Uh, but that's essentially what's been going on. Mm. Dull and boring. <laughs> Dull and boring as normal. As me. Now, as far as I'm aware, where I'm currently working, everybody knows me as Trucker Bill. I mean everybody behind the desks, everything. So, hopefully, hopefully, 
it won't be too much longer and I'll be able to start doing the usual trucking uploads, you know, from the cab and, and driving around and stuff like that. But I don't want to push it at the moment. I don't want to just start doing it and assume I want to know for sure. Um, because I went to see my agency not so long ago and I am essentially now the lead driver for our agency on that site and if they're putting new guys in they're supposedly going to be putting them with me for a day to do some training now if that does pan out if that does happen because I know this site takes on new drivers if you are in and around the area um, it's the Waltham Abbey area so if you're in oof, quite a large catchment area really if you think about it it's the edge of Essex onto Hertfordshire and of course you've got Enfield and around that area if you're anywhere within that kind of area and you're getting into HGVs and you're doing your class 1 if this does pan out contact me Obviously I've got Twitter, I've got Facebook, things like that. You can send me direct messages. Um, for example, if you use Twitter, I know I've got to follow you before you can send me a direct message. Just leave something on Twitter again. As always, the links are below. Um, and just message me. Or message me via Facebook, because you can do... Uh, Facebook, YouTube, sorry. Because you can do private messaging and stuff like that on YouTube. And I'll let you know which agency and go from there because I know the place I work for takes new drivers they just want bums on seats getting loads out so that's one thing you can um, take with you if you want everybody's always curious about well how do you get experience well I can tell you for a fact this place takes people who are so wet behind the ears I've actually been asked how do you hook up to a trailer So you want to start getting experience and you're in this area? Contact me. I am sure my agency will put you in there. I am certain of it. I will talk to them. I haven't actually spoken to them about this. So if they're watching this, sorry guys. <laughs> but there you go. Um, but yeah, I'll see if I can organise something like that. But at the moment, like I said, it's it's... It's all smoke and mirrors at the moment. So I've just got to confirm things. But like I said, if you're within Essex, Hertfordshire, kind of that area, you can go down. I, this, well, I live in Braintree. So that's 45 minutes away. So if you think about where Waltham Abbey is, uh, that's Junction 26 off the M25, if you're curious. Kind of just, if you don't mind travelling 45 minutes an hour or something like that as a commute, circle it and if you fall in that catchment area jobs are good but yeah so mm. but I think I've covered absolutely everything I wanted to today um, I don't think there's anything else I can think of a few things but that's for another day but anyway cheers guys Catch you later. Like, subscribe, share about, do whatever it is you usually do. I will see you in the next one. Unless I'm having an out-of-body experience. Cheers, guys. See you later.